Hi everyone, Grant K here for the Smoke Learning Channel. In the previous video, we set up Action and the Analyzer node to perform the 3D track. With the initial 3D track complete, let's go ahead and start refining the data. To give you an alternative view of the 3D point cloud, select the Action Schematic and press SHIFT F7. This brings up the Analyzer working view. In other words, this gives you a third person perspective similar to the working camera view in Action. So you press CONTROL OPTION to zoom the view out. Using the Tools pull down menu, you can switch to the Orbit mode or press OPTION O. So if you move around the view, you should be able to identify features in the 3D space that match the analysed shot. For example, this section of the point cloud is the TV stand. The next step is to identify and delete any bad tracks that could have compromised the analysis. The way you judge the success of the track is based on this pixel value error. The lower this value, the more successful your 3D track. Try getting this as close to zero as possible. But remember, even if your pixel value error is below 2, it might still be good enough for a successful 3D camera track. Press SHIFT M to switch back to MOVE mode. To tweak the analysis, switch to the fine tuning menus. Scrubbing the time bar, watch out for any blue boxes or green crosses that may not be sticking to their targets. Once you've identified them, you can select them individually or COMMAND CLICK to multi select the objects. To delete the objects, just press the DELETE button. You will notice that the camera solving options have highlighted. This indicates that they will need to be refreshed with the updated tracking data. We can refresh the tracking data now or later, or continue to refine what we already have and update the tracking data at a later point. There is no defined recipe what to do first. Coming back to refining the 3D tracking data, you can also use the Analyzer filters as a threshold to eliminate unwanted tracking data. Increasing the QUALITY filter exponentially selects tracking data that the Analyzer considers inaccurate. And increasing the SHORT filter knocks out tracking data that is only on screen for a short period of time. Just be aware that if you delete too much tracking information, the Analyzer will not have enough to perform the 3D camera solve. Press the DELETE button to delete the selected information. The filters will reset back to zero. As I mentioned earlier, the Analyzer is indicating that the camera solve needs to be updated with the updated tracking data. You now have two choices to perform the camera solve. Clicking UPDATE will take the existing 2D trackers and redo the tracking before performing the camera solve. If your previous track has not really been that successful, then choose this option. Clicking REFINE will take the current analysis with the fine tuning and use that as the basis to refine the 3D camera solve. So if your 2D track works but the 3D solve slides a bit, then you should be able to refine the 3D track. I'll click REFINE and you will see the pixel value error decrease. This will give us a more accurate 3D camera solve. At this point, the Analyzer will keep attempting to refine the camera solve. So you have to manually stop the refining by clicking anywhere on the screen. You will get a message that the 3D track will be terminated. This is not entirely accurate. You are simply accepting the refinement value that has been derived from the 3D camera solve. Click CONFIRM to stop the refinement. The 3D point cloud has now updated, and if you scrub the time bar, the 3D track should be more accurate. You can repeat this process if needed to keep refining your track. The other fine tuning tools are optional, but they will orientate the camera to match how the footage was originally shot. This will inadvertently align all the points in the point cloud to the correct X, Y and Z planes in 3D space. If you switch to ORBIT mode with OPTION O and move around the working analyzer view, you will notice that the camera is shooting horizontally. However, looking at the original footage, the camera appears to be filming from a higher angle to the ground. 
You can match the 3D camera to the footage by defining what is actually the ground plane in 3D space. Under the plane header, click Define to enable the ground plane. A grid appears in the view showing you the default positioning of the ground plane. To define the ground plane, you need to select points in the point cloud that represent the floor. Ensure you are in Move mode. Hold COMMAND and start dragging a box selection over the points. You need to select a minimum of 3 points to define the ground plane. The more points you select, the better the estimation of the ground plane. Once again, switching back to Orbit and orbiting around the Working Analyzer view, you can see that the 3D camera closely resembles the angle of the camera from the original media. Now this is not perfect, but it's a starting point to fine-tune the ground plane. Using the sliders, rotate the ground plane to the floor. Next, you can scale the plane to match the proportions of the scene. This proportionately controls the distance between the points in the point cloud. So if you are compositing in a massive landscape, you might want the point cloud to be spread out. Or if you are compositing in a small room, you might want the point cloud packed closely together. This doesn't affect what you see through the 3D camera. This is just an exponential space between the points in the 3D point cloud. Once you are happy with the ground plane, turn off DEFINE. If you do not disable this option, as soon as you select a point, it will mess up the point cloud. Another tip is if you wanted to hide the grid for the ground plane, switch to the display menu. Using the drop down menu, you can turn the grid off. The ground plane alignment will remain unaffected, and you can turn the grid back on if you need to. Going back to the fine tuning menu, there is one other option we can look at before moving on to the next video. Here you will find a header called Real World Measures. This option allows you to define a distance between two points in the point cloud. Like the plane option, you need to first enable DEFINE before selecting the points. Ensure you are in SELECT mode. Holding COMMAND, drag a box selection around two points. A line forms between these two points and a numeric value updates in the slider. This value is the distance measured between these two points. You can also manually specify this value if you choose to. The reason for using this tool is when you export the camera and the point cloud to a 3D application, you are defining real world measurements. The 3D application can use these values to match the CG to the live action footage. Remember to turn DEFINE off. We'll talk more about exporting the camera and the 3D point cloud in a later video. Coming next, we'll convert parts of the point cloud to point locators that are used to composite any elements into our moving shot. Comments, feedback and suggestions are always welcome and appreciated. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to the Smoke Learning channel for future videos.